welcome to Southern Girl Knits, episode seven. It is so good to be back with you. Um, I'm Tish Knits, and I'm your host, hostess, yeah, hostess. <laughs> and um, I feel like I've been gone forever. Oh my gosh. Um, let's start with the basics. You can find me on Ravelry, and as Tish Knits 33 or on Instagram as Tishnitz, which is where I spend most of my time. <laughs> so come and find me. For those of you who um, are coming back, welcome back. For those of you who are trying me out for the first time, I really appreciate it. So I basically have been gone for forever. <laughs> it seems like I've been gone forever. I don't know. I had a really long Thanksgiving break. It was awesome. Like seriously, we were in Louisiana for eight days and it was so much fun. We had a blast. I have so much to tell you about. So, you know what? I'll tell you about a lot of that first. We do have a giveaway, which I will do at the end. That way, if you're not interested, you don't have to hang around. So, um, I've got some pictures that I'm going to try to use my technical prowess to add into the video, which basically means if I can't do it, I'll wait till hubby to get home and have him do it for me. It's kind of the story of my life. I think I can do it. I really do. <laughs> but sometimes me and iMovie don't get along, so we'll see. So we had a great trip in, and you know, I think I'll try to insert pictures as I tell you the story. So yeah, this is be hopefully this will be a picture of us on the trip in and you'll notice how happy we are. <laughs> You're always happy the first hour of a trip, right? It's like, woohoo, we're going on a trip. Yay, everybody loves everybody. Everybody's just hunky-dory happy and yeah, that was hour one of an eight hour trip. <laughs> Actually, it wasn't too bad. Considering that we have three kiddos, it, it could be bad, but they get along. They're good kids, so no big problems, nothing to worry about. So, But we all, we all were very still happy when I took that picture. So um, the other thing that we did while we were in is we went to the university campus that my husband and I met at because I told you in a previous episode that Thanksgiving Day was actually our anniversary, our 15th wedding anniversary and so we went to the campus and walked around and we actually because we're big old nerds we met in the computer lab at southeastern so we went and tried to track down the computer the, the university that we went to has grown a lot and changed a lot and shocker it's been like 20 years right <laughs> but they've done a lot of changes including the fact that guess what Nobody needs computer labs like they did in the early 90s. Everybody has their own laptops and iPads and whatever. And so there's like hardly any computer labs left on the campus. And one of the ones they got rid of was the campus, the, um, the lab where we met. They turned it into some other room. <laughs> we were so sad. But we had a lot of fun walking around the campus and it brought back a lot of memories and we took a picture like this one. Don't we look happy? <laughs> it's a beautiful campus. It's Southeastern Louisiana University and um, it's in Hammond, Louisiana. Gorgeous university, wonderful system. Um, I did, I was a theater major there. I was a theater major. Woo! And you see that degree really helping me out there, right? Yeah, yeah. So, um, <laughs> but um, we had a lot of fun. We got to um, walk around and hang out, share some memories, take some pictures. And then I also got, my mother always makes me a pink cake for my birthday, which was the 14th, but obviously we didn't get to go in until later in the month but she still made my pink cake for me. And here's a picture of me eating it. Yeah, I like my pink cake. <laughs> it has to be completely pink. 
pink, pink icing. I don't care if it's cherry, I don't care if it's strawberry. You can make it vanilla as long as you dye it pink. It has to be a pink cake. It's a tradition, right? I don't know. <laughs> it's been happening since I was little. I have to have it. It's a comfort thing. So um, the other thing that we got to do was we got to go to dinner with my mom, dad, um, my brother, my sister, and my sister's husband. Um, my brother's wife wasn't there yet. Um, their kids didn't get out of school the full week, so they didn't join us till later. But we did get to go have dinner at um, Ruth's Chris. It's a steakhouse. I don't eat steak, but it was still really nice. <laughs> and I got a picture of me and hubby together. And we had a really good time. It was really nice. Um, but we almost didn't make it there alive. <laughs> so my family's really competitive, right? And my sister and brother-in-law and me and Russ were at her house, which is closer to Baton Rouge than my parents were. And our reservation was for like, I don't know, seven, let's say seven. So we knew that we were closer to the restaurant. So we thought, hey, we don't have to leave as soon. But then we decided, hey, if we do leave a little sooner, we could go hang out at the bar and maybe have a drink or two before my parents get there with my brother. Great plan, right? We're like, woohoo, this sounds wonderful. So we jump in the truck and we head out and my mom texts me and she's like, hey, we're at your exit. And we're like, oh my gosh, they're going to beat us. Well, that just can't happen. <laughs> so then becomes... <laughs> The race to end all races. We proceed to, um, we've in, I, I don't know how many of you have ever been to Baton Rouge, around Baton Rouge, or know anything about Baton Rouge. The traffic is horrible. It is horrible. It got, it's always been bad, but it got so much worse after Katrina because a lot of people moved up across the lake and it's just, it's terrible. It's terrible. It's horrible. And my, my brother-in-law drives this ginormous truck. It's like this big dually truck, okay? And so basically, I'm not going to tell you how fast we're going because, you know, I really don't want to put that out there on video that we were going faster than we should have. But basically, we were going really, really fast. And I was doing a lot of praying. <laughs> and we're texting back and forth with my mom, who was not driving. The non-drivers were texting and relaying things to the drivers like, you know, there are two cars ahead of us. Hurry up. So we won. <laughs> and we tell the waiter this, that, you know, we barely made it there by the skin of our teeth and get a big kick out of that. And so he presents us with a free dessert. Which I thought was super cool. And then since my brother lost the race, he got stuck with the ticket. <laughs> So needless to say, it was a really, really fun night. And the rest of the time, I stay with my sister. My brother and his family stay with my mom and dad. And so I got to stay with my sister and her family. And she has a beautiful fireplace. So I got to sit in front of the fireplace every night. My brother-in-law was so nice to make me a fire. And I sat in front of the fireplace and we drank wine. And I got to knit and we got to chill out. And it was a lot of fun. And here's the fireplace. Doesn't that look lovely? It was just, it was so inviting. It was just nice to cozy up and sit with family and visit and get a little bit of knitting done. And when I say a little bit of knitting, I mean a little bit of knitting. I brought like all these projects and had all these wonderful intentions of getting all the things done. And yeah. I really didn't get a lot of knitting. <laughs> we did a lot of drinking and a lot of talking and a lot of eating, but not so much on the knitting part, right? But, um, and Thanksgiving Day was absolutely wonderful. Here's a picture of my kiddos on Thanksgiving Day. Aren't they precious? They're so cute. And we had a lot of fun because we can't just do Thanksgiving the normal way, right? I told you about the trebuchet. So my brother-in-law and my husband decided to build one together. And they came up with this crazy design. It's insane. I'm hoping the video will fit 
And if it does, I'll put it in right here. One. If it doesn't fit, I'll try to put it in at the end, but hopefully you got to see it because they spent a lot of time working on this. They built it and then we spent a good two hours on Thanksgiving Day after we'd all eaten just pretty much shooting anything that we could out of the trimmage. <laughs> my sister has ducks in her pond and at one point we're like, let's shoot the duck and my sister's like, no. So we ended up with like soccer balls and pretty much anything that would sit still, we would put in the trebuchet and chunk it. It was awesome. It was great. It was so much fun. And then they, oh, and we decided to do water balloons, right? We're thinking, hey, let's do water balloons. That would be a lot of fun. We'll send all the kids really far away because I think the furthest point was like 270 yards that we were shooting things. And so we're thinking, we'll shoot water balloons at the kids. We send the kids out there, and we put, and all the parents are standing around the trebuchet, and we're like, ha, 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 the kids are going to get so wet. This is going to be so funny. And we shoot the water balloon, and the trebuchet is very powerful. And the water balloon just goes straight up, burst, and just sprinkles down rain over all the adults. Yeah, it was like that. <laughs> it was so funny. Way funnier to the kids, right? And so they decide that water balloons, we decide water balloons are not what we're going to be shooting out the trebuchet. So we end up with like a ton of water balloons. So the kids are like, hey, water balloon fight. Awesome. Great. Have fun. Go for it. So they decide to hit my brother-in-law at the same time with all the water balloons. And there's like 10 grandkids. And they all just pelt him with water balloons. And he's such a good-natured guy. He's like just laid back, chilled kind of guy, and they hit him with the water balloons, and he proceeds to pick them up and throw them into the pond. <laughs> it was so funny. So hopefully I can put the video here. Oh, hurry, go! I got it! Go! Go! Throw! And that is my daughter being thrown into the pond by her uncle. And the funny part about it was, is that all the other kids are fighting. They're like kicking and like, no, we're going to, I'm going to beat you. I will get out of this. And my, my daughter is just like, ragdoll goes limp and allows herself to be thrown into the pond. I'm like, way to have that fighting spirit, baby. <laughs> We really need to work on that. So, yeah. That's, you know, that was fun. <laughs> and so, but yes, overall, all in all, it was a very awesome, great visit, great time. I did get to go to the local yarn store there. It's called T. Lou and Josephine's, and it's in downtown Hammond. And it is so awesome. It's a... It's more of like a, when it started out, it was called like a domestic art store and they kind of catered to like, I think you could take like sewing classes and do things like smocking and stuff like that. And then the new owner, when she took over, she pretty much just made it into a yarn store. I think they still do a lot of like handmade soaps and stuff like that. But for the most part, it's just yarn, which I'm okay with. And it's a beautiful store. It's, it's very lovely. I'll try not to set that down on my bag. So, of course, I had to buy things, right? So, I got, and they wrap everything up for you. It's so nice. And I got some Roco socks. She had a great sale going on, so I didn't even have to pay full price for this. Roco sock. And do they have colors on these? $14.51. I don't see a color name, so I guess there's not a color name. But it's this beautiful green color. And I'm not, I've never knit with this, so I have no idea how it's going to knit up. But I don't know if it's going to be striped or variegated or, or what it's going to do. I don't know. I guess I'll be surprised. I'm going to knit these into socks for my mom because green is her favorite color. So these will eventually become socks for her. And then I also got, I'm so excited about this. I got two skeins of this. I don't need to take out both for you. 
some Rowan Pure Wool DK in this lovely blue. Isn't that beautiful? It's a lovely, actually it looks, for the first, it's not saturated. It's actually showing up brighter for you. It's a, not quite so bright. Um, let's see if there's a colorway. I see numbers. I don't see colors. We'll just go with blue. We'll go with pretty, pretty blue. That's the name, pretty, pretty blue. And it is a DK. So while I was there, I picked up a set of needles because I'm thinking hat. And I got the US size 7 4.5 millimeter um, Knitter's Pride Dreams. There we go. And I don't have a set of dreams, so this is my first set of dreams. And it's the 16 inch cable because that's how I knit my hats. I knit them in on a cable, 16 inch cable, until it gets to the decrease, and then I switch to DPNs. So um, I'm kind of excited about casting this on because, you know, I love a good hat, right? So I think that'll be fun. And then of course, you know, you gotta go to Hobby Lobby. I love Hobby Lobby, it's crazy. And I got some Red Heart. It's got a big sticker on it, but it's the Red Heart Heart and Soul with Aloe. And I don't know if I've knit with this one yet. I've knit with the Red Heart, but I don't know if I've knit with the Red Heart with, um, with Aloe. I guess that just makes it yummier for your feet. Seems like that would wash out. I don't know. But the colorway is faded jeans. And again, I'm not sure how this will knit up because I've never knit with it. But the picture on there that they put to show you what it's supposed to look like. There it is. I'm kind of hoping that it does that. It looks like it has some really neat, interesting effects going on. So I don't know. I guess we'll see. And I also, well, I got two skeins of that because you got to have two skeins, right? And we'll see if I can find the other one. Yes. And this is also a new to me. Premium yarns. It's wool free. It's 93% acrylic. And 7% PBT. Some form of nylon maybe? I don't know. It's really teeny tiny fine yarn. And the colors are wonderful. They're very vibrant, but the yarn is just like ever so small. I don't know. So we don't, I don't know. I don't know if this will be, it's so soft. I mean, it's like really, really soft and squishy and you can really feel the stretch in it. So I'm not sure if that will become socks or maybe I'll use it with my sock squares. I don't know. I guess I'll have to cast it on and see how it knits up and if it makes me happy. Because that's kind of what it's all about, right? If it's not making you happy, then kind of what's the point, right? So, but the one thing that I did get done was I started on the barn raising quilt. And I have a square to show you. There it is. It was hiding from me. This is my first square. Isn't that pretty? It's out of Mustache Yarns in the Sesame Colorway. And because this is, I want to say a 16 color, 16 color repeat, it's like a lot. I never had to repeat a color. It starts with the green and ends up here with this, like the last one is a dark blue, but it was purple because it was getting really thin stripes towards the end. I love, 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 love the way this turned out. I just think it's going to be beautiful. I really do. I'm super excited about it. And so, of course, I immediately cast on another one because they're kind of addictive, like for real. Like you wouldn't think they would be, but they are. And so I cast on another one. And I'm, using, I'm doing the magic loop. Um, when I cast on, I cast on, on the big, well, I would show you my needles, but they're caught up in, they're caught up in another skinny yarn. So I cast on with my long 32 inch. And then when it gets to a point where I can, I'll put it on the 12 inch circular needles and just go round and round and round until time to bind off. So this is the what my leftover Hiawassee Creek in the Breakfast at Tiffany's colorway. And again, it's just knitting up so beautifully. Now, I can't imagine what it's gonna be like to put all these together. I'm actually a little concerned about that. 
because I'm thinking I want to make the blanket kind of big, right? I want this to be significant. I mean, I know this is a project that's going to take, it'll be ongoing for a very long time, right? I know that. I've accepted that fact and I'm okay with that, but I'm afraid that like, let's say that I have 50 of these squares in a year or however long. I don't want to put them all together. <laughs> I'm so lazy. The thought of seaming that many squares kind of scares me. So, you know, it's a blanket for me and I'm not really that concerned that everything be like matchy matchy and have it laid out perfectly with everything in this certain order. So I'm really just kind of thinking that like if I lay five squares out, cause I'm gonna block, I'm gonna go ahead and block the squares. I'm gonna block the squares and lay them out. And when I see that I need like five squares across and that that's big enough, then every five squares, I will go ahead and seam those five together. And then the next five, seam those together and so on and so forth until it is long enough. And then I'll only have to seam those together. It sounds like a good idea right now. I guess we'll see. It's kind of one of those trial by fire, right? I don't know. So... Um, oh, the other thing I have to show you that I worked on, it didn't get very much love while I was in Louisiana, is the boot cuffs that I was telling you about, the Rebecca's boot cuffs. And I'm loving the way these are coming out. They're making me super happy. I actually kind of wish I would have focused on these because I seriously have only knit on these for an, an hour, mate, max. Like max, it might not even been that. It was like probably half a TV show. And this is what, and I'm using a little bit bulkier yarn than what she calls for, or maybe not. She calls for air and weight. And yeah, this is bulky, not Erin. So yeah, I'm using a bulkier weight yarn, but I am loving this. Like, this just makes me so happy. In fact, I think when I leave here from you, I'm going to go and finish these up because I don't have very much longer on these until this one's done. And then it's a matter of throwing the other one on the needles and getting that one done. So hopefully by the next time I see you, I will have one, if not both of those done. And perfect time because it's cold. I spent the whole week in Louisiana and it was 70 degrees and lovely and beautiful and sunshiny. And we drove back home to Arkansas, which is like, you know, eight hours north. And that's with a dinner stop, you know. And it's like 50 degrees, something like that. I don't know. It's cold. It's cold. It's cold enough that I had to go buy the boys bigger jackets yesterday. And then we went on the search for mittens because I knit them mittens every year. And they seem to just vanish. It's like there's a great mitten chasm that all the mittens and hats go into that, I, yes, I don't know. So I went to um, Target, Walmart, one of those stores, and picked up the little dollar gloves because I have knit all the children new hats and new mittens for the winter. It's just usually they don't need them this early, but I don't want to give them their Christmas gifts. <laughs> so I went and bought cheap gloves and gave them to them this morning, and I'm keeping their mittens for Christmas. It's kind of hard because I want to go, look what mom made you here. Go be warm, my child. But no, I'm kind of selfish. So they are sticking with the dollar mittens or <laughs> gloves. But I did get these on and off the needle since I saw you last. I think after I recorded the last video, I cast them on. And within one day, maybe two, these were done. And these are going to be for my oldest son, my middle child. No clue what the yarn is. It was a rogue ball of yarn, both of them, the green and the blue. I know that it came from a big box store. That's pretty much the only thing that I can tell you about it. It's probably a Lions brand. And I have, I don't even know if it's wool, like super wash or regular wool. I should find this out before I give them to it. I've got some left over, so I'll knit a swatch and be washing that and find out what happens so that that would be bad to play in the snow with this and felt it up. So I guess I'll. <laughs> I need to knit a swatch and watch it. Wash it. So, yes, I have two mittens done. I put them on, but I think they're a wee bit small for me. Oh, not so much. Not too bad. They look better on him because, like, there's <laughs> there's room here. <laughs> His hands are tiny. 
And then I also knit, and I knit this a little while back, but I'm in love with this hat, so I want to show it to you. This is also his Christmas present. And I love, 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 love this hat. I love knitting this hat. I love looking at this hat. I think it is the most beautiful hat in the world. The colors are wonderful. Again, it's a hodgepodge of yarns. I know this middle one is a Debbie Bliss. Um, this bottom one is a Lion's Pride, like, Heather yarn. No clue what the orange one is. But that pattern is Golden Pear. And I'm sorry, I cannot remember the author's name. And I can't remember if it's a paid-for pattern or if it's free. Either way, if it's not free, it is totally worth buying. It's beautiful. I mean, it's just gorgeous. It knits up wonderfully and obviously needs to be blocked. It's been sitting in the gift bin flat, so I've got like a nice little seam going on right there. But um, it's so pretty. It's so cute. I love it. So they're all getting hats and mittens. Maybe I'll drag those out and show those to you because they're things that I knit earlier in the year, so you haven't gotten to see them. And I spent a lot of time on them, so you need to be able to see them, right? So let's see. I think, I believe that's all that I have for you because I didn't get too much knitting done. I got a lot of shopping done <laughs> and lots of stories to tell you. So let's move to the giveaway. Yay! We have the Rainstorm Studio bag. You remember the bag with the cool little handles that you can crisscross. And, and she has these in, I know she had some in her store for Thanksgiving. She had a sale going on. But the great thing about her store is that you can request bags. You can just tell her, look, I like this fabric and the style of bag, and she does custom orders. And that's awesome because I'm all about some custom orders. In fact, she's got a new bag out that, remember the bag that, this is my favorite bag, hands down. Um, this has my Skype socks in it, which are almost done. Maybe I'll have those done for you by next week. Here's hoping, right? I don't know. I've gotten distracted by all the things lately. But it has the clear window in it, so you know what's in it. Well, her new bag has the window in the front and in the back. So I think that's actually going to be my next purchase. So we shall see. I just got to pick the fabric out. So let's go on to the giveaway. We had um, 58, well, 57 people enter into the drawing because the first one was me. So I did the random number generator, and I did that earlier because I'm new to this, so I just took a screenshot of it. And the person that won whoop, is the number nine. And I think, oh, I did. I brought it up on my iPad earlier. Yay, me. I'm so smart. And it's um, Susie Q Knits. So yay. She says, the prompt was, what do you love about the holidays? She said, I love seeing the house all decorated for Christmas, but most of all, I love Christmas Day when my family gets together to open presents, and we have a delicious Christmas dinner and a Carvel ice cream cake for dessert. That sounds wonderful. I don't even know what Carvel is, but <laughs> ice cream cake, can't go wrong with that. And I totally agree with you. That's like some of my favorite things too. I love, we've gotten our house decorated and it's awesome. Like my tree is up and it's beautiful and the village is up and the manger scene is up and I'm so excited. I love Christmas time and we decorated right before we left so that we came home to a decorated house. It was like the most brilliant idea I've ever had. <laughs> so um, Susie Q Knits. Let's see, what is your real name? I bet it's Susie. Susan. So Susan, if you will send me a private message on Ravelry with um, your name, your shipping address, I will get that out to you this week. And congratulations. I'm so excited for you. And we will have more um, giveaways coming up. So, you know, come back and see what else we have. And I think... I'm looking around and I'm thinking that's all that I have for you. So I hope you enjoyed the pictures and the videos. And I hope that you had, if you're in the U.S., I hope you had an amazing Thanksgiving. If you're not in the U.S., I hope you had a wonderful Thursday. <laughs> and, of course, we're already into December. So, hey, I am, like, all about the holiday season. And I hope that everybody is just having a wonderful December. I hope it's not too very, very cold. If you're in Buffalo... 
I am so sorry. <laughs> I've been following that and I can't even fathom that much snow. Honestly, I cannot fathom it. Like, I've seen the pictures on Reddit and Facebook and Instagram where people have opened their front doors and it's just a solid wall of snow going up with a door print in it. It's crazy. So, and I assume that's all over now. I don't know. Let me know because I'm kind of curious. Because um, all that's on the news right now is everything that's going on in Ferguson. And if you are anywhere near Ferguson, I hope that you are staying very, very safe. And um, so maybe you all go find some happy news. Is there such a thing, right? I'm kind of addicted to watching the news and it's kind of depressing. So I don't know. Let's just make our own happy news, right? We can do that. We can make happiness all around us. That should be our goal. Just go out and make your own happy news. And until I see you again, I hope that you love your knitting and that you always stay awesome. Bye-bye. See you next week.